Welcome to the Marketing Stir Podcast by Starista, probably the most entertaining marketing podcast you're going to put in your ears. I'm Jared Walls, Associate Producer and Starista's Creative Copy Manager. The goal of this podcast is to chat with industry leaders to get their take on the current challenges of the market, but also have a little fun along the way. In this episode, Vincent and AJ chat with Ro Palermo, former Vice President of Brand Experience and Visual and Merchandising at Steinmart. She explores her role with the department store brand and how she viewed herself as a matchmaker for brands and stores. She also goes into great detail about how she finds inspiration everywhere she goes. AJ gives a lecture about driving cars, and Vincent learns that Bloody Marys are everywhere. Give it a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Starista's The Marketing Stir. I am Starista's Vincent Petrofessa. It's great to be here. Again, brought to you by Starista. Who are we? Identity marketing company, we help you get new customers. Email marketing, we have our own B2B data, B2C data, programmatic display, direct mail, omni-channel, we have our own DSP. Adster, email me, you already have been. I love it, vincent at starista.com. That is how confident I am in our services. I just gave the world my email address. A small portion of the world, we're not that popular. We are popular, but not global just yet. Some countries. We're getting there. Anyway, with me, as always, this next guy, he's very, he's global. He is worldly. He's traveling right now. He just arrived at his latest Airbnb. If you're following the podcast, he's an Airbnb king. He loves just testing out other areas and places. Ladies and gentlemen, my co-host, the CEO of Starista, Mr. AJ Gupta. What's going on, AJ? Hey, Vincent, I don't know how global you'll call uh, driving to Dallas, but uh, I appreciate the sentiment behind your thoughts. Exactly. You know, people have been following you. You've been exploring Texas. You're like the new (laughs) governor of Texas. They could use you, I think. I don't know much about your government there in Texas, but uh, uh, that sounds pretty good. Governor Gupta. (laughs) Yeah, I I have considered that. Maybe maybe one day if the podcast gets famous enough. I love it. Exactly. We all hope so, right? Ro hopes so. That's a little teaser of who our guest is. She's, uh, you know, we're very happy to have her on the podcast. We'll get to Ro in one minute. Teaser, teaser, teaser. But uh, awesome, AJ. Yeah, you're there in Dallas with the family. You live in San Antonio. For those of you who know the podcast and know AJ, you just uh, just arrived a little bit of a getaway, huh? Tell us about why Dallas. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think we have something that uh, you haven't owned in a while. We used a car wow. to uh, drive from San Antonio. Uh, we even have a driver's license, a couple between us. So, yeah. Yeah, so no, why Dallas? It's uh, really, uh, normally we like to travel once out of the country, even if it's like across the border to Mexico or something a year. But with the pandemic, uh, we really were just... Uh, looking for something that's uh, driving distance and not too cold. So that pretty much leaves a handful of cities in the South. So we picked Dallas out of that. So <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You know, normally you would have been probably in New York. You were supposed to be here this summer visiting. Yeah. It would have been a fun and it would also have been a productive summer having yeah. AJ here. It would have been fun in the sense, you know, we would, have, we would have went out, we would have had a good time. So my liver probably thanks you for that. But we can't wait till you get back up here yeah. in I mean, New York. The good news is you can find Bloody Marys anywhere. Anywhere, you know, not anywhere. You showed me this drink the other day that uh, was a Bloody Mary and beer. I think that's yes. only in Texas, so I have yeah. to find that out. But uh, as I said, we did miss you in New York. Speaking of New York, oh my goodness, our next guest. This is a first on the podcast because we have someone, an expert in brand experience, visual merchandise. And I say New Yorker because I knew this woman was a New Yorker without even knowing where she was from because we just vibe new yorkers vibe new yorkers know each other aj you're not there yet you know you're a, you're a, a, we i'll designate you a new yorker but new yorkers just know one another now she lives in florida <laughs> now so i have to talk to her about that but ladies and gentlemen i am so proud look listen to the experience hudson's bay company lord and taylor most recently steinmart ladies and gentlemen please welcome 
the former vice president of brand experience and visual merchandising at Steinmart. Ladies and gentlemen, Ro Palermo. What's going on, Ro? Wow, I love the intro. That's how you know you're from New York, because you do a real big intro and a real buildup. I'm so jealous about hearing about you guys doing all the cocktails, though. I miss that experience in New York. I Maybe know, one I, day we'll all be back there. We'll all be back there. You know, at a eight, bar. At a bar. I mean, I, yeah, we're doing, AJ and I now drink remotely together. We'll work on a project together. It's usually a Saturday or Sunday. That's the dedication we give to our customers there. He'll have a Bloody Mary. I'll have an old fashioned. That's how we drink. But in person would be much, yeah. uh, much better, Ro. We got to get you back up to New York. Yeah. You know, I'm passionately a bartender at heart. So oh, yeah. I do, nice. yeah, I do uh, make um, Zoom bartending calls, you know, with, with my family, introduce new cocktails to the, to the mix. That's awesome. So one we day, you never know. No, we got to get you on the, the uh, Direct Marketing Club of New York, DMCNY. We're thinking about doing an event, and, and that would check off a few boxes because, A, you know, you, you know how to make cocktails, but, B, you're also an industry expert in a field that we want to explore. So let's put a pin in that because we, that's the Direct Marketing Club of New York here, an organization okay. that I'm a board member on, and Starista is actively involved in, so we will do that. But, Ro, first of all, let, what brought you to Florida? You know, come on, you're a New Yorker. What brought you down there? there? Uh, what brought me to Florida? It's a good question. I, I love New York. I was born and raised in New York my entire life. Um, I came to Florida, one, because I um, was interested in actually going to Mexico. So we, we share a little passion there. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to challenge myself. I took a new job. I was working in New York City my whole life. And I took a new job. Um, and the corporate offices were here in Florida. So I decided, you know what, why not see what it's like to up and leave the big city? Um, and I did. So I came here to Florida and started learning how to work from pool. It's a new, it's a new term. I Most like it. From work from home, but work from pool is, is pretty damn cool. That is pretty cool. I know that's uh, AJ, you will be doing that soon. Working from pool in a couple, uh, what, another couple months? I, I hope so. We'll see how, how that goes. I think it's warm enough where you are. Do you work from pool? No? Uh, it depends on uh, year to year, but hopefully, if not in a couple of months, definitely in four months. Oh. So. Oh. Yeah. It's oh. always, it's hot for me when I go to San Antonio. That's, uh, it's, yeah, I, I was I there in July. Come straight from New York. It will be warm enough to jump in a pool here. But if you <laughs> live in Texas, you may want to wait a few more months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either way, I'm jumping in that pool when I get there. But uh, so that's the reason there. So, Ro, tell us about your, your the recent experience uh, at Steinmark, uh, Steinmark, excuse me, the the uh, you know brand experience, visual merchandising. Tell us about your your role there. Um, sure. I, I think you know my my entire career was built on creating experiences that are fun, engaging, and um, you know I call it like matchmaking for for the customer and for the brand. You know, we, my role is to create the first date, you know, create the energy, create the, do I love it? Do I like it? Do I hate it? Or do I want to like spend a little bit more time um, and get to know it a little bit better? I think that's what my role has been my whole life with whatever company I've been with. Um, but, you know, it's really creating that energy, that excitement and that customer connection to the brand. So, uh, you know, when you walk into a store, when you walk into a space or when you walk into anything, it's like, wow, this is cool. This is great. This is pretty. I love it. Or mm, not for me today. Hopefully, you know, it's the love it part. That's, you know, the ultimate goals. We create the, I love it. Um, and then, you know, the customer decides like, do I want to come back? Do I want to spend more time? Do I want to explore? Um, so I was doing that for Steinmart, uh, for a little bit of time. Um, Spent a lot of time doing that for Lord & Taylor, Hudson Bay, Saks Off Fit, and then before that, um, Mitchell's, Richards, and Marsh's. So, you know, I love, I love being the matchmaker for brands and for stores and for the customer and creating that love match. That's awesome. That's a great way to describe it. And, and how did you get into this role? Were you just always passionate about aspects of, of retail and merchandise or uh, art background? Tell us about that. Uh, you know, I say I fell into it by luck. I was, you know, at first, I would say like long, long time ago in high school, I was working at like a fast fashion store, you know, in the mall, like most teenagers do. And, um, you know, I was working in a store and someone decided to have a good idea, make me a key holder, make me a manager. I don't know why, but good for them, smart. <laughs> um, and I really fell in love with like 
clothes and re-merchandising and the look, you know, how does it look and changing everything, you know, and, and every time I felt a little bit bored, I wanted to change everything. So that's like the first introduction into retail that I had. You know, my, my first job was being, you know, I was delivering newspapers with a radio flyer. That's grueling work. I don't recommend it for anyone. It's dirty, working all the time. Um, so I got into retail, which is totally not working all the time. Um, <laughs> joke. Uh, for those in retail, they know that. You're always working. But, you know, I, I fell in love with, like, store. Um, so then I was lucky. I was in high school. I needed to take on um, internship. And so I was at FIT. They had on the job board, hey, you know, job and visual. No idea what that meant. Sounds cool. I decided to start working for Lord & Taylor. It was my first job in high school. It was really fun. I did a lot of cool stuff. And I just fell in love with creating presentation. Like I just loved it so much. I stuck with it and I kept going um, with it. And so, you know, that brought me to many, many years later that I can't get out of it. Like it's just a passion. Hmm. So, Ro, I, you know, usually my engagement with brands has really been on the back end, looking at the data. So I don't have much experience with the store visualization and presentation. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how it works in terms of do you create the designs in the corporate environment and the managers implement it at a store level? How does this whole thing work? Um, it's a little combination of everything. And I'm going to say you probably have a lot of experience that you don't know of because you walk into a store, you walk into a restaurant and you walk into an Airbnb and you either like it or not. And that's what people like me, we do. We create that like it or love it experience. Um, so, you know, how do we get, how do we do it? Um, you know, you, I, I say everything's built with a destination or a dream, right? I want to be here. I want to do this, you know, so whatever that might look like. Um, you start building the vision and then while you're building the vision, right? You have the dot on the wall. This is what I want. This is what it's going to look like. And this is the time it's going to get done. And then you work backwards. Like, how am I going to get it done? How's that going to happen? How is it going to, you know, how, who would I need to involve? How much is going to cost? Um, and so you might test things just at the corporate level, but for me, you know, I've always had my approach is, um, let's be in the field. Let's be with the teams. Let's see if, if I could do it. Right. So if I could do it, then I feel, feel pretty good that anyone can do it, right? So if it feels okay for me personally, then I'm going to roll it out to stores and, you know, get feedback from my store teams. Is it easy enough? Is it um, something that you're inspired to do? Or is it something that you're going to be like writing my name, that not so nice word? Why did she make us do that? But if everyone is like enjoying it, having a good time, loving it, and feels good and feels like it's add value, then for me, that's a win-win across the board. The customer loves it, the store teams love it, and together we win by, by doing this exercise, right? By creating the vision. And that's kind of how I've always worked, you know, my, my whole career. Um, how do we get it done in the most simplistic way, but the most impactful way that everyone is willing to give up their time to do it and feel like it's an amazing experience, both for the customer and for the store teams that have to execute it. And then the other question I have for you related to that is uh, with the retail was already sort of in a, uh, in a bad footing in a lot of places with changing behaviors of shopping online. And especially with the pandemic, a lot of the people are now shopping online, uh, via Amazon and other D2C um, websites. What's, what do you think is kind of the future of store presentations? Do you see it uh, rebounding after the pandemic is over? I absolutely see it rebounding. I, I want to say, you know, when you think about shopping, it's the same thing that you might think about ordering takeout. But at the end of the day, no matter what, everyone actually really loves going to their favorite restaurant, love going to their favorite bar, having a drink together, just like people like going to a store. You know, they love the experience. I do too. You know, I, I, I order takeout. I might look at travel on a website, but the experience of actually doing it, the experience of actually going into a restaurant, having a drink, or the experience of shopping is fun. It's the, you know, it's the mini vacation to your day. And I don't think as, as great as, you know, we all can shop in our PJs, it's easy, but you love, love, love. Everyone loves seeing things, touching things the store, connecting to the store, seeing what's new and feeling product. I think, I don't think that'll ever go away. Just like I don't think um, going to a restaurant would ever go away. 
Yeah, I like that description of it. And, and I, for me, I'm that way. I do online shop, but it's never really for clothing because I guess I have a weird body type. I have like these weird big shoulders and then I'm, I'm like shaped like a rectangle apparently, I think. <laughs> so for me, I always love going to, the, to a store trying on i drive my wife crazy because i'll like i'll run around the store i'll do like push-ups in it it's a weird thing i know i'm push-ups too. yeah i'll just yeah it's weird like maybe like three how's that going over in the store they like yeah that? yeah no well yeah they they allow it they're happy they, they, okay. they they're fans of the podcast so they welcome me in there i'm kidding they don't know the podcast <laughs> but ro i guess what i'm getting at <laughs> yeah, or i'm getting at is Love it. i'm spoiled in the sense of stores here in new york city because most of them are like the flagship you go into a store there's like a ninja who pops down from (laughs) he's like here's your here's your bag to shop but that's new york yeah Yeah. yep that's that's new york city is that how the rest of the how retail should see it moving forward just like making it an experience for people what are your thoughts on that Yeah. I mean, I think just like when you travel the world, everything's an experience, no matter if you're in a big city, a small city, a little town remote in the middle of nowhere, everyone wants to experience something. You know, it might not be as grandiose as the biggest city, but you want that connection. You want that feeling of community, right? It's again, I go back to restaurants because it's the easiest thing to understand. No matter where you go to the most elaborate restaurant, to the little mom and pop, it's, it's the smell, it's the feel, it's the touch, it's the service. And it's what's unique. So you're going to love going into retail. Any, anyone wants to see, touch, smell, and be out of their home and do something, whether it's for vacation or whether it's for shopping or whether it's for eating or whether it's for drinking. It's your mini vacation from the average day. And maybe they don't do push-ups like you, but you know, people like going to a store. And it's like, it's, you know, girls like to shop together. I like to shop with my niece. I like to go alone. Um, I love to see what stores are doing. I love to see the design. So whether you're in a big store, you know, big city or a small town, even these little beautiful, remote, independent retailers doing a beautiful job showcasing their product and actually showcasing what they offer to the consumer is a plus and it's a win. And the people want to do that. There's nobody that doesn't want to buy new clothes. There's nobody that doesn't want to see something brand new. Hmm. And yeah, that's that's the take that I have on it. I always like going into a store, and and nowadays, I'm more shocked when I actually do receive good customer service. So that always resonates with me. I, I love that experience. Uh, you know, if I'm trying on a shirt, AJ, and someone is like, you know what, that shirt looks great on you. You don't need a double X. You're really an extra large. I'm like, well, thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. That makes me <laughs> that makes me feel good. Yeah. So I want to also get back now. You've won a lot of awards. Uh, you know, I'll embarrass you a little bit. You won a lot of awards. Uh, you know, yeah, you, uh, you know, quite a few awards for your store designs and being in this industry. Um, is there anything, what, what inspires you when, when you're going to a store? How, how do you kind of get into the zone when you're creating these, like, frankly, these award-winning layouts? I would say everything inspires me. You know, I, I, uh, I'm constantly taking photos. I'm constantly like swiping photos. I think no matter where you are, you know, I, it, it, whether it's the sunset, right? The sunset and the lighting of the sunset that's going to inspire how I light a holiday window. Or if I go to a beautiful, you know, building uh, in Spain or I've traveled to France or I've seen something in Germany, there is something everywhere. And when you just pull that all together and you say, you know, this is the look and the feeling I want, it can come from anything. I mean, I've, I've taken holiday windows from a beautiful lobby bar that I've seen somewhere. I've seen an art installation um, and wanted to recreate it. I've seen a beautiful, you know, cake. And I think, oh, that's, that's gorgeous looking. Why not recreate something like that? I think inspiration literally, like it, it comes from anywhere, you know, or you wake up in the middle of the night with a crazy idea and, and that's the inspiration too. And they're all good. You know, you may dream like, oh, I, I see this whole vision of Airstream trailers all decked out. Like, okay, you know, it comes from everything. Everything, everywhere, I, you know, I, I think creative minds, we, we may be a little crazy because our minds are like, like the matrix, thousand things at once, ah, um, and you start pulling it all together. Um, but, you know, I think when you're creating something, it's, it's, it's a thousand ideas, a thousand thoughts, and then you try to hone it in into what's going to be the feeling and the connection when you do it for a customer, right? And make sense out of it. 
And so that when they walk in and start doing push-ups, it's feeling really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Rube, you've done quite a few of these displays over the years, but is there one that you can think of uh, that, that really stands out? Maybe like the summer of 98, you did something or <laughs> some, <laughs> something random that really kind of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, stands out and uh, you know if you have a visual we can definitely put that out in the social when we publish the pod podcast as well well uh, i'll say aj because you know it's the holiday season i would say uh, one of the things i love doing the most was holiday windows for lord and taylor um so those are going to be the most you know in my mind it's not the summer of 98 but it's you know the november of 2016 through 2018, yeah. maybe, but you know, I really, I, I love doing them. I, I, and I'll tell you, it was, it's a passion project. You spend so much time, so much energy, so much labor on doing them, um, you know, and the unveiling of the holiday window and bringing the magic of holiday to New York, which I think truly is a blessing. You know, I, I love Christmas myself. I love lights. I, I love seeing the whole city done with lights. You know, when you unveil a holiday window, it's like opening the gates to the magic kingdom for the first time. You know, everyone's, their heart skips a beat for a quick second. And then you're like, oh, wow, you know, just super excited. So I, I love that. And I would love, literally like love standing on the street, you know, at night and just listening to people's, you know, thoughts and what they were doing. I wouldn't say who I was. I'm just, you know, oh, hi. Oh my God, that's so cute. You know, pretend I was looking at the windows like they were too. Um, and just, just get feedback, see what people were doing, see what they were saying. And, you know, I would hear so many cool stories like, oh, my mother and my daughter and my granddaughter, we come here every year and we come look at the holiday windows and we love it. You know, we travel into the city every year. So when you ask me like not summer of 98, it's every year that I got to open up a holiday window um, for New York City and become part of the New York experience, like true New York experience. Millions of people come into New York every single, you know, holiday season to shop and eat and look at holiday windows. And, you know, that for me was probably a blessing that that was one aspect of my career that I got to do that. And I really love that the most, you know, it was really fun. And sometimes, you know, you got to give a small child a little behind the scenes tour of a holiday window. And how frequently during the course of the year would you refresh the uh, designs? You know, I would say there's going to be some things that are going to last maybe a month, two months, and then there's things that are going to change every week, right? And you have to have a healthy balance of um, what's going to be a little long term, right? And then what has to change more frequently. The average customer comes into a store, maybe, you know, post pre-pandemic, uh, average customer comes into store once a week. They visit the store, you know, whether it's the store that's close to your office that you stop into on your way home or the one that's, you know, in your town, but the average customer is shopping in the retail store once a week. So you need to change that, right? Because they want to see something fresh. They want to see the new hot item. So some things you're going to change weekly. A holiday window, for instance, isn't going to change weekly. That's like nine months worth of blood, sweat, and tears. That's gonna stay for a little bit of time, but other things are gonna change more frequently inside the store. Again, because people notice what's new, they notice what's fresh, and also it's gonna inspire you know, the customer to buy something brand new or see something brand new. So wait a minute, a second, wait a minute, Ro. So you were also responsible for the Lord & Taylor windows in New York City? Yeah, those are a few oh of those my. awards. Those are a few of those awards you were talking at, about before. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, well, they. I look. I I uh, I knew. See, I knew you were great, but that's <laughs> even that's insane. So, for those of you, see, native New Yorker, the Lord and Taylor windows are. It's a treat. It's like an event. There are people who are lined up around the block to look at those windows. They are just like ridiculously festive. They are great. I, as an adult, enjoy them. I got to show my son 
um, for a couple of years here, the, the windows there. That's the thing about New York City and Christmas time. So that's, yeah. there's nothing like it, nothing better. Even, you know, this year we're, we're, we're hoping that it's still, uh, you know, great and people enjoy it. Less people, way less people visiting the city. Yeah. But that is awesome. Like, what, what went into, what went into those, the thinking there? Was it kind of, and when did that start? That's not like a three weeks before, uh, you know, Thanksgiving yeah. sort of thing. Tell, talk to me about the process of those windows because that's a huge, huge deal. Yeah, that's a lot of drinks. Yeah, um, nice. Before no, it's. I'm gonna uh, grab a drink. This is making me hungry. <laughs> I'm gonna go shop, do some push-ups. I like it. I'm gonna get a drink and I'm gonna go for a nice meal. This is inspiring, bro. Good, you know, support local businesses. Shop, I do. Eat, drink, I dine. sure it's do. A New York moment. That's New York. I, you know? I do it. Uh, so, you know, I, I think planning windows, I, I, a lot of times I was, you know, talking about this in different reviews, but you know, planning a holiday window is like nine months of work. Like you're really, wow. you're really giving birth to something phenomenal. Um, and you know, it, it is a labor of love. A lot of details go into it. A lot of mechanics, a lot of lighting. There's so much that goes into it and a lot of planning, like what's it going to look like? What's going to feel like? What's the emotion that we want to invoke? Um, what is it that's going to happen when we finally open them up? What's the customer reaction and what else is going to happen during that unveiling inside the store, right? So it's, it's lovely. I keep going back to it's the first date. It's, it's, it's attracting a customer, making them stop, see something amazing, make a personal emotional connection, right? So you're taking your sons there. It's, it's fun. Your kids' eyes light up. They have a good time. They feel good. And it's our job, you know, or it's my job to have that happen, to have the adult be really excited just as much as the kid, right? And have everyone want to come back year after year after year to see that. And it's a lot of working on those little, little details, right? So, you know, how's the squirrel smile going to look? Like, does it have eyelashes? You know, dumb conversations that if someone overheard you talking about a squirrel or a gingerbread and what they were going to wear or what they were going to look like, you know, it sounds maybe... Mm, not not normal a little but, crazy yeah <laughs> but it's all those little fun details that you think of and you dream about um that really make the most amazing holiday windows and you know all the retailers in new york do such a phenomenal job and they're all unique and they all have a different approach um and a different feeling and it makes new york an amazing amazing city like i say it's the disney like it really new york city is disney for adults and children alike um, but it's free admission and just everyone can come, but it, it's the best. It's the best holiday in New York is, is phenomenal. No, it is. I, I love it. And even as a native New Yorker, my whole life, whether living in Westchester County, which you also grew up in, right? We'll talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but for me, I would always come into the city now living in Manhattan the last 10, 12 years. It's no matter what, I brave the crowds and I go see and then and I take, I just was just myself, my, my wife and I, now the kids. So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a great thing to do in New York City. I encourage everyone to, to come into New York City, especially the holidays, but also relic. What, now what's the difference you're noticing? I mean, there's so many differences between New York and, and Florida, obvious, you know, obviously, but a few, a few, yeah, a few, just yeah, like just one or two. Yeah. Or 1200. But what, What's the difference when you, you know you, you're you're there and you're designing windows uh, from from New York to Florida? What what's the, the taste? The, you know, I would imagine a lot of colors. I always think Florida it's uh, bright colors, right? Pinks and turquoise and I don't know. That's just me. But anyway, go uh, t tell me about uh, that experience. Well, I would say you know even when I was at Lord and Taylor, we had stores. We had a store in Florida, um, so I wasn't you know it was the first time out there. But you know. Uh, you know, being, I only live in Florida, right? But, but, you know, my former company had stores, you know, all over US, 281 stores, you know, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina. So, you know, I'm in Florida. It's a different feeling, a different vibe working from, you know, I was working for a company based in the South. But, you know, again, just like when I was with Lord & Taylor and Saxaw Fifth, I uh, had US and Canada, right? Locations across the country. So, you know, you want to think of a universal vibe of what's going to work for everyone. But being in Florida, you definitely have a new uh, appreciation for palm trees and how, how Christmas looks completely different right. in Florida than it does in New York. And not to mention it's warmer here. Um, but, you know, I'm a New Yorker by heart. 
I haven't come in as much as I love uh, in the past, but um, I think there's a different vibe that happens here. Definitely you want to make it more regionally appealing, you know, same thing as if I was visiting you over in Texas, it'd have a little bit of a different flair. Um, but you know, the one thing that I think, you know, you, we can all say is the more you travel, the more you experience, the more influences you have, the, the better the creativity. Ro, what are some of your marketing pet peeves? And especially if you have any stories from Florida, that would be great to hear. <laughs> oh. mm, marketing, you know, I, we were talking about this, like when we first talked, I would say marketing is the invitation, right? So marketing is that great invitation that says, hey, come to the party. Um, and then when you get to the store, it is the party, right? So, you know, that's, that's how I, you know, my analogy. So I, do I have a pet peeve about marketing? Um, the only thing I'd say, it has to be really amazing because you're inviting people for the first time and that invite has to be over the top. Um, uh, maybe only pet peeve is, you know, I'm, I'm super visual, so I'm always looking at fonts, I'm always looking at colors, I'm always looking at arrangement of everything, whether it's on a piece of paper or in a store. So maybe I have a little, you know, a few OCDs about fonts and the look and the feeling and the colors. Um, but, you know, that's across the board, whether it's in a piece of, you know, direct mail or something I get in my email. Um, I'm always looking for that. So if it inspires me, I want to go to that, you know, site. I want to shop or I want to go to that store. If it doesn't have that like 30 seconds or five seconds, I'd say looking amazing, you lost me, like lost me as a customer, lost me for everything. You know, you know, it's been kind of a last six months have been difficult for a lot of industries, but uh, retail in particular. So what's your advice to people that are studying right now or students and kind of who want to get into similar profession as you, uh, what do you think your advice is for them to do in the kind of the next couple of years? Well, I think, you know, what we've all learned is space is actually a luxury right now. And the feeling of safety is a luxury. And I think that, you know, anyone getting in the industry of retail in totality, um, you know, really, you have to believe all of that in your core, what you're creating for the customer, what you're creating for your associates, what you're creating for your team is a feeling of security, is a feeling of space and the use of space and how you're gonna use that space and making it feel like it's a community. Really, you have to think of connecting your customer to your brand and what that connection is gonna be. You know, I joked in the, in the beginning, it's, it's like being a matchmaker, right? It's setting up people to fall in love with each other. Um, but you have to believe to the core that everything you're doing is for the good of both parties, right? That it's good for the customer, it's good for the brand, and it's good for the people working in the brand. Um, you know, and I would say people getting into this industry, don't be afraid to do anything. Just do something. The best decision is a decision. The best decision is making something happen. If it does well, great. If it doesn't, it's totally okay. You're going to learn from that. Um, you're going to learn from that mistake. You're going to laugh about it. Um, but you're also going to have, you know, the next idea is going to be even more fantastic. So I think for the people getting in the industry, really understanding that it's really the moment the customer gets or gets in their car or walks, right? Depending on who we are. The, the second you decide to leave your house, however you get there, you know, maybe you don't have to drive or whatever that looks like. But the second you leave your house, it's a choice to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you better make that choice worthwhile in, from every touch point, from the second you get to the door, the second you get in your car, however that is for that person, how is the journey and have you made that journey fabulous? You know, again, I, I relate it back to going on vacation. You know, you, you plan to go somewhere. When you arrive at your destination, you want to feel, wow, this is amazing. I don't regret this for a moment and I can't wait to enjoy it. Oh, and hopefully I can't wait to come back too. I, I like that. And uh, Ro, we ask we asked about our marketing pet peeves. We have another signature question that we ask all of our guests. It's it's revolving around, and people really love this question because we've have people we have salespeople respond to us and say, "Hey, thank you. Like this helps me when reaching out to a a, a VP, a C level executive." 
It's the LinkedIn question. Mm -hmm. It's the LinkedIn. I would imagine people are reaching out to you all the time on LinkedIn because of your title. And what's a message on LinkedIn that you would respond to? You're really nice. So I wonder, you're probably, you know, getting back to people. Uh, majority of people we have on here, they're like, this is what I hate. I have 14 pet peeves. But what is a LinkedIn message that gets your attention and allows mm -hmm. you to either set up a meeting with them or respond back to them? And what is one or two or three that you don't like as far as a pet peeve? that someone reaches out to you on LinkedIn? I'm gonna say in this, I, I am maybe kinder than some maybe other guests, I don't know, but um, I will say- <laughs> <laughs> You do listen to the podcast, so yeah. You know. I, I do, but um, I, I say right now, I think everyone has to take a chance to listen um, and learn and read and connect. Um, I think it's the time where everyone comes together as community to get to know what people are working on and see how you can support each other. Um, I think that's number one. No matter what they reach out for, um, let's all get together and just help someone else out. Whatever, whatever that might look like. You know, they might, you never know when you pick up a call or schedule 15 minutes and learn about someone's industry, how you might know how you can help them or something really cool that you never knew before, right? So I think every connection's a great connection, right? Every connection's a great connection. Could learn something, could teach you something, oh, or you might just be able to help someone else out. So I would say on LinkedIn or anywhere, you know, when people reach out to you, just take a moment. It's only, it, it might take you three minutes to respond back. Just do it. You know, it's not going to kill you. Um, you might, it might make you learn something. Um, but I would say, you know, for anyone reaching out to other people on LinkedIn is learn a little about the company that they're in before you write to them about something. Um, you know, learn a little bit, a quick second, learn about the company and learn about the person that you're writing to. It can help a lot. One pet peeve from a New Yorker. I love it. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's another a, first. That's the only one. That's the only <laughs> first pet peeve. Because if, like, if you were asking me, oh, what are all your other pet peeves? We'd have to be like another two hours on Yeah, yeah. We're like, oh, this is what I hate about everything else. But yeah. <laughs> You know, no. I can tell you about like loading a dishwasher pet peeves, like laundry pet yeah. peeves, like house, it, all of those. There's a lot. But the LinkedIn one is like very slim, very slim. So lucky LinkedIners. All right. Yeah. Well, that's Ro Palermo. I'll reach out to her for sure on, uh, <laughs> on LinkedIn. Oh, God. Well, How many no. people are watching this? This is 55,000, I think. Uh, in, Oof, uh, well, I don't know. I'm Maybe. A... We'll see. <laughs> but, but uh, well, now, Ro, tell me about it. So because, you know, just being unfamiliar with the space, but, you know, like you said, holiday windows, you know, the, the platinum award, the gold award, is that, because that's probably a lot of, the dreams for people, right? In, in, in your, in your field it, to do one of those windows, because, you know, no one's looking at the, the windows uh, in April in Dallas, Texas at uh, oh. somewhere, right? Or maybe they are, I don't know. AJ's there. Uh, he's <laughs> going to look at them. I mean, Chicago is a fabulous job too. Like there's a yeah. lot of places to do. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's really nice. Like, you know, I, I said like uh, one time in my career, like the fact that you can um, be, Bergdorf Goodman at anything is like, wow. Mm -hmm. So I think that's amazing. You know, there's some other words that, you know, we won at Lord and Taylor, you know, in my, in my career um, for the dress address, which was an amazing project. Um, it wasn't a holiday window, but it was a beautiful renovation project, um, you know, that, that highlighted the heritage of the brand. Um, the fact that most people knew Lord and Taylor for getting their first dress, including this, this person on the call. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it was great. And, you know, all of those awards are lovely. It, it just says that um, people are responding to it. People are admiring it. Um, it's fun. It, it's, I'm thankful for them. Um, I didn't do them alone. You know, I, I really didn't do them alone. I have a really fabulous group of people that, you know, worked with me um, and, and helped me along every single sense of the word. Um, so I'm grateful to every, every person that's ever worked for me. All those vendors that helped, because, you know, we could drive vendors crazy. You know, we, a lot of pressure on vendors to be on time, to get it done right, to make it look fabulous and not be late. Um, but winning, you know, I, I say winning an award is a highlight of your career as anyone would like to. It says, you know what, I made a difference. I made an impact um, on, you know, other generations, like AJ was asking before, are the people coming into the industry? Like you win an award because you failed a lot. Honestly, like you did a lot of dumb things. Um, and you learned from them. And then like you got rewarded because you were smart enough to pay attention to the lessons that you messed up. 
So um, I always think that's the beauty of an award too. Yeah. Well, and then, and before, uh, you know, before we wrap up and then, uh, you know, AJ, I'll talk about some of the, you know, get into your personal life a little bit in a good way. Like kind of, that sounds. That's where the scandal than, comes out. That, that's yeah. That sounded worse than it really, really oh, gets. It's like, so let, tell us about, uh, you know, what was and it? The summer piece. of 98, AJ, <laughs> where everything went down. I'm kidding. Well, so, you guys but did I heard your research. Years, but. We have a, we have a crack research team. We, <laughs> we, we, we didn't know about the platinum awards that you won uh, for windows, but we do know about the scandal but but Ro, my, my point was be was kind of like they're like a challenge where you're like you know what this is a type of company that i'd like to get into uh, just that was my question of kind of like well you're you're you know you've already done oh. this this and that what, what do you want to do uh kind of next what, what would challenge you up? yeah when you grow up <laughs> we're, grow we're, up? we're uh, toys r us kids you know <laughs> um you know what i really want to reinvent um how we shop uh in in 20 21 through 2025. I want to uh, come up with something groundbreaking that's going to alter the way people look at shopping um, and how we shop today. That's a little bit more personalized. I want stores to become the mecca of customer service, space, and fun and excitement and inventing um, all over again. You know, I'm working on, I call it a passion project to bring hospitality and brands together in New York City. Um, and work together as a community where brands um, and hospitality share the space and sponsor each other, you know, in something that's going to be a little like fashion week meets, you know, um, uh, restaurant week, you know, brands and hospitality come together, they support each other, they create beautiful events, and the hospitality industry will host brands, you know, and redefine what shopping in New York is all about. I call it a passion project because, you know, New York tough never leaves you. Um, so that's just one thing. Um, I will forever want to create new experiences in retail for the customer, create fun new environments, redefine retail, make shopping exciting, make it fun, and make it the place that you want to be. You know, like shopping from your couch is great and lovely, but who doesn't want that hot, tasty meal that the store can serve up? And doing that, whether it's, for you know a permanent retail location or a pop-up shop or you know something that maybe only be for the day it's okay how do we get retail back to the consumer so the consumer can touch smell taste and see what retail is all about and create the most fabulous experiences for the customer that's that's what i want to do when i grow up so i don't know um you know when i'll ever grow up but i want to continue doing that <laughs> well no I'll, I'll ask this last question here so ro and also what do you like to do in your free time? What, what are your, besides looking at vision boards and, you know, the eyelashes of a gingerbread, as you mentioned before, <laughs> like what, what are some of your interests that you love doing? You know, I, I think like most of us, I love travel. I love seeing new places. I love, you know, venturing into new countries. I always loved going on a trip somewhere or once or twice a year. Um, so I, I do love that. I love seeing architecture. I love visiting small towns. I love experiencing food. I love spending time with friends, obviously, like everyone does. Um, you know, those are things I love to do. I love connecting with people. Um, but travel, I think, is the one thing I would say in 2020 that I really, really miss. Nice. Well, awesome. Ro, this has been an absolute pleasure. It, it, uh, it makes me look at, I've always appreciated what stores are doing. And, you know, again, being spoiled in New York, but I'm even more going to be more visual about it. This has been great. My fellow New Yorker, Westchester County, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Ro Palermo, Vice President of Brand Experience and Visual Merchandising. This has been awesome, Ro. We really appreciate your time here on The Marketing Stir. That's Ro. I'm Thank Vincent. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. That's AJ. This has been another episode of The Marketing Stir. Thanks, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Stir podcast by Starista. Please like, rate, and subscribe. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, email us at themarketingstir at starista.com. And thanks for listening.